Okay, let's rock and roll. Here we go. Let's get down to it. You're here, and the reason you're here is you're trying to figure out how to do this. So let's nuts and bolts it. Before I start, I'm gonna back up one step and say this, and, and please take this the right way. Do you really wanna do this? And you can say, well, come on, man, I'm here. No, do you really wanna do this? I mean, you have to ask yourself, is this, do I, do I, do I wanna devote my energies and time to be a successful investor? And if you say yes, and you really mean it, then we'll get to work. And the only thing stopping you is you. A lot of people talk about winners. We have to talk about losses. And I'll just share this with you. Something I'm really big on at Mission Winners is keeping losses very, very small. I can't stress that enough. Stocks are good above a certain point and they're bad below. And if you can remember that, life is much easier. So we, we limit losses. Seven to 8%, no way. Two to four to 5% tops. No day trading, no scalping. So now you've made your mind up. Okay, we're over this threshold. Yeah, Pat, I wanna do this. All right, then what's the next step? Well, then you gotta learn, you gotta learn how to do it. And that's where I come in, all right? And there's other great people out there too, all right? Not knocking anybody, I don't do that. That's, that's me as unprofessional. So the first question you say is this, yeah, I wanna do this. So now what do we do next? First step, how to build a watch list. And one of the best things you can do is have some hard and fast foundations. And this is from years, decades of tearing this apart. I have a good friend who's a VIP. I'm not gonna use his name. We spent probably two years determining what moving average to use on the day chart on a stock. I mean, we studied it every day to figure it out. A couple of different moving averages. And a lot of it had to do from work with um, a man named Ed Sakota. And if you don't know who he is, Google Ed Sakota, S-E-Y-K-O-T-A. Google him. He, I met him in California and he really changed my life. He really challenged me. So for that, I'm grateful. So you've determined you want to do this, and we're going to build a watch list, some foundations for you. And these are facts. And then I have a question. We can talk about this chart, but that's for later. Let's get down to some foundations that can really help you. And I hope that when I slide these into the screen that they show. We're going to start with this one right here. I post this a lot, folks, and this is great research. Does that show up on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. As I stated, I was an IBD meetup co-leader for years. I am not a simple can slim investor. I will tell you that right now. I'm going to be blunt and I'm not going to can slim at all because it changed my life. If you wait for the cup and a handle formation only, you will starve to death. It doesn't happen enough. And again, that's not a criticism. It is an observation over three decades of doing this. So what do we have to do? We start from the, from the bottom up. Let's build. What are the traits of super stocks? I mean, really, isn't that what you want to own? You want to own super stocks right here. This is from a book, 40 Great Stock Market Winners. This is great, great data research from Investors Daily. First part, 87% of these stocks had earnings up 30% or higher. 71% of them had earnings up 50% or higher prior to their move. Folks, think about that. What are we saying? We're saying approximately 80% of these stocks that freaking make huge moves have earnings up on average 40% or higher. There's an edge that you can use. You can say, well, you know what that means? I'm really going to look for stocks that have earnings up 40% or higher. Number one. Number two, 0.5 down here. 86% had sales up 30% or higher. 63% had sales up 50% or higher. What am I saying? I'm saying over 72, 74% of these stocks had sales up on average 
40% are higher before they are moved. So now we have a foundation and this is sweet. In fact, it's sweet potato pie. Think about this. Super stocks, foundation, earnings up 40% or higher last quarter, or average sales for two quarters of 40% or higher. There's your foundation. You can say, well, okay, Pat, that helps me. Now I've got some fundamental foundations. What else do we have here? And I'm going to show you. We'll log this out. I'm going to pull another screen in here for you. Does that come in, Owen? Good. And you can read all this and it's great. But the bottom, the bottom sentence, or the bottom two sentences says it all. There are different industry groups, folks. Their research, and I use it, and I love it, and it helps me. 50% of a stock's movement is related to its industry and sector. Now, let's back up a bit and think about this. I mean, what are we trying to do here, folks? We're trying to build a watch list, okay? Let's build the dang watch list. First. Well, I'm going to look at 5,000 charts every night. What are we, crazy? You can't do that. If we know for a fact that the vast majority of super stocks have earnings up 40% or higher or have average sales up 40% or higher, and right here, about 50% of a stock's movement is related to its industry and sector. Why the heck don't we sit there and say, I'm going to look for stocks that have either great earnings and or great sales, and they're in the top 20 or 40 groups. There's 197 industry groups. Stick with stocks in the top 40 industry groups. And you can say, man, I might miss something. And you know what I say? Why not stack the deck in your favor and look for the best of the best and the, where they are populated. And here's the facts for you. I think that's huge, absolutely huge. So let's stratify this further. The first part of our webinar talks about how to build a, a watch list. So here you go. Stocks over $10 a share. Stocks that trade more than 200 to 300,000 shares a day. Stocks, and I'll go slow here. So you can write this down. Stocks with an accumulation distribution rating of A or B. Stocks over the 50 day moving average line. Stocks over, as I state, 10 to $12 a share. Stocks within 20% to 30% of 52 week highs. Stocks that are in the top 20 to 40 industry groups. There's 197 industry groups. Stocks that, as I stated, have either earnings up 40% or higher or average sales for two quarters up 40% or higher. If you wrote that down and you stick with it, you <laughs> will make money. And you can say, boy, Pat, that sounds kind of arrogant and cocky. No, I'm just speaking from experience. It's a fact. You can say, well, I might miss something. Why don't we stack the deck in our favor? Years ago, I taught statistics on a university level. I'm a numbers guy. I want to stack the deck in my favor. It's like, I might miss something. Well, let's suppose there's two fishing ponds. And in one, every, every hour, you catch or the person fishing in that pond catches one good fish every hour. And there's another pond by it, and there's somebody else fishing, and every hour they catch 10 to 15 fish. Where would you fish? You fish in the good hole. You go the one where the good fish are. These constraints, and I know it sounds corny, these constraints show us what to look for in our stocks. If we can do that, we're light years ahead. So now you have your constraints. I'll do it again real quick. Over $10 a share, stress the top 40 industry groups out of 197. Stocks that trade at least 100, 200,000 shares a day. Stocks that are within 20% of 52 week highs. As I stated, over the 50 day. 
Stocks that last quarter's earnings are up 40% or higher. Our average sales for two quarters are 40% or higher. Again, accumulation distribution of A or B. Stocks can be ranked by buying pressure or selling pressure. A means they're really being bought. B means they're being bought. C means it's neutral. D means they're being slightly sold. And E means they're being sold. Well, what the heck? Let's go with it and stack the deck. You know what? I'm looking for stocks that last quarter's earnings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, are so-and-so, but the dang thing's being bought. Isn't that what you want? Strength. Strength begets strength. So now that you know what we have, if you take those constraints and put them in your system, you will have a great watch list of stocks. Now, we're going to go real world here, folks. What do you do with it? Well, sort it. You can say, well, how the heck do I sort it? Do I sort it by price, Pat? No. Here's a great tactic for you. Have you ever heard the phrase, birds of a feather flock together? This will help you. Sort it first by industry group rank. So all the stocks in the same industry group are together. How do you sort it second? Sort it second by percent off high. Industry group rank first, percent off high second. What does that mean? You're looking at the stocks in the leading groups and you're looking at the ones that are the closest to 52 week highs. You're looking at the strongest stocks in the strongest groups. There's money there. I love it. Is it a gimmick? No, it works. I've been doing it since 1986. So yeah, it works. It's, it's the best. It's the best. Stick with it. Um, hey, Pat, let me jump in for a second. I, um, we got some people waiting, I guess, in the waiting room. And, oh, okay. Uh, I can't let them in because I've given you control. So I guess I need control back. You know, we do a few more of these webinars. We'll actually understand how the Zoom thing works. Is there anything I can do to help Owen? Can you give me control back? Of over... course. How do I do that? That's a very good question. Let me see if I can just take control. Let me see. You want if to razz in real it. quick? I might have to. Yeah. That's fine. Um, if you go over there, you see my name on the right hand side, or do you just see a list of people that say uh, this where it says admit? I'm just looking here. Nineteen people have entered the room. Um, your sharing screen, stop share. I wonder if those 19 people are waiting because there's 73 in here. So maybe 19 are waiting. Okay, what could I do to help? Let me, you know what? Let me res into your machine. Sure, you're more than welcome to. So Owen is my partner. I've known him for a long time and he truly is a wizard when it comes to all this. If it was up to me, I'd be talking into a can with a string. Take it away, sir. There's got to be. How about Here's that? Huh? Look at that. Doc's there. Okay. Tell so maybe if you can move this little screen somewhere and then every once in a while just uh, okay. see how folks just keep coming. And I mean, at some point, maybe we'll just have to okay. set it aside. But My apologies to all of you that missed the first part. Let's do a recap real quick. Don't you think, Owen, what we just covered? No, because um, this has only been, I mean, I let everyone in. And then okay. I think just keep going. Okay, very good. Just to let you know, folks. We are discussing the fundamentals of super stocks, and I'm just going to do a two-minute recap. Focus on stocks that are in the top 20 industry groups to the top 40 industry groups. Focus on stocks that have either earnings up 40% or higher or sales up 40% or higher on average for two quarters. Focus on stocks over the 50-day. Focus on stocks with an accumulation distribution of A or B. And by so doing, you will find super stocks. That's how you build a great watch list. I have about nine screens that I run. I put them all together on one list, sorted by industry group rank first, percent off high second. And that's my list for the week. That's what I look at. That's it.
and it works like a champ. All these stocks that have done made huge moves were on that list, and I can document that. Okay, I could go back if you really wanted to needle me on it. I could pull up a, of course, it would have to be with Owen's help. I could pull up a key list from two years ago, and we could find some stocks on there. It's a fact. So anyway, that's how you build your watch list. The next part of this is what part does CanSlim play in our trading investing strategy? CanSlim plays a very large part in it, and I'll tell you why. I am looking for super stocks. Bill O'Neill, who I met years ago, as I said, changed my life as far as developing some specific foundations and rules and tactics on finding great stocks. Now we took it a step further with mission winners. We are, and it's not knocking can slim at all, we're more stringent in what we're gonna look for. And here's why, we're not running a mutual fund. We're managing our own money. I mean, I see all these names on this list. You're managing your money and you don't wanna mess up. And I don't blame you, you, you wanna, um, you know, you wanna succeed at this. So instead of saying, I'm just gonna throw something up on the wall and hope it sticks, we become very stringent in our tactics, screening tactics. So we know how to build a watch list. We've got that covered. So now part two, going back to it, circling back. What part does Canceling play in our trading investing strategy? As I started just a minute ago, a lot. As far as finding great stocks. I love finding stocks that have great, great characteristics now but great opportunity. So do I use CanSlim? Yes, as I stated earlier, but for the new people that just came in, do I look for just for cups and handles? No, you'll starve to death looking for that. We have several other chart patterns that we use, but overall, what are they? They are very clean and simple chart patterns. Again, it doesn't need to be a cup and a handle, I just want to find a pattern that's easy to see. And you can say, Patrick, why do you want to find a pattern that's easy to see? If you think about it, let's be pragmatic. It means other people see it too. I remember I worked with a guy out in California and he's sitting there saying, man, I found a chart pattern and nobody knows about it. And I said to him, well, if nobody knows about it, that, uh, that means they probably won't buy, will they? They, they don't know, they, they don't know it. He goes, oh. Yeah, I never thought of that. And that's why we really work hard on finding a couple of easily recognizable chart patterns. And one of our favorites, and we're gonna show a few here later, just a clean and simple flat base. Just, you know, it's been going sideways for several weeks or longer, that's all. And it's really relatively tight and constructive. All right, and it's simple. When it pushes through the line, you know, if it, it's been trading between 18 and 20 bucks for three weeks. It finally pushes over $20 on heavy volume. You buy it, that's it. Now, I said something very important there and I wanna add something to it. I said, it pushes through $20. Please take note of this and this will really help you. And this is the real world. When it's pushing through that clean and simple pivot point, what you wanna see is you want to see a volume surge. And we've got some VIPs in this room right now and I could ask them and they could take it from right here and, and explain exactly what I'm talking about. Take a look at the daily chart and then nail it down as it's approaching that clean and simple pivot price. Look at the hourly chart and look at the 30 minute chart. Look for a volume surge as it's approaching and pushing through the pivot price. I'm telling you, if you do that, you will be light years ahead of other people. It works, it's the real world. This isn't textbook stuff. This is living in the trenches, all right? So you find a stock, clean and simple, it's got all the fundamentals, and we'll say the pivot's 22 bucks, and you're watching it, and you're going, man, the stock's 21 bucks, 20, 22, 21.40, 
Look at that. Look at that thing's approaching the pivot. Let, let me take it down to an hourly. Look at the volume coming into this sucker as it's approaching the pivot price. I'm just showing you what clean and simple looks like right there. It's just going sideways. And when it finally pushes through that clean and simple top, look at the volume surge. This is a phrase that I use a lot. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. I want to go with their voting. And how is that represented in a chart? It's represented by price, but volume, volume surges. As it's approaching the pivot price, this is the daily chart. Take it down to an hourly and or 30 minute chart and look for volume coming into it. If you don't see the volume, don't buy it. That will save you a lot of money and it'll also save you a lot of heartache, you know, right there. It pushed right through. Look at the volume surge on the daily. Check this out right here. The day before on this bar here, the stock did right there. It's clean and simple tops, by the way, folks. Just there's a white line and nothing fancy. On this bar, the stock did 42.7 million shares. Pushes through the pivot on 164 million shares. It did almost four times the volume on this bar than the previous bar. They voted right here. They voted right here. They voted. Look at this. On this bar, stock's just going sideways. On this bar, the previous day, it did 89, you can see it right there, 89 million shares. On this bar, 214 million shares. It did more than double the volume of the previous bar. They voted and it's off to the races. If you can remember that combined with great fundamentals, you have yourself your watch list. By the way, when NEO broke out, it was in a leading group. It was in the top groups. And just to drag home the point, Tesla right there. Some of you have seen this before, but I just want to point this out. It's clean and simple. Look at this line, just connecting the tops. It's above the moving averages. This was in the top five groups when it broke out. On this bar, it did 8.6 million shares. On this bar, it did 20, almost 22 million shares, almost triple the previous bar. They voted right there as it's approaching the pivot. You buy, go back here, right there. In fact, I'll show you something. You'll love this. Let's do the real world. Okay, there it is. I drew, I drew on the line. We owned this, okay? And we're just watching it here. And say, gosh, I guess if it pushes through this line, this clean and simple line, a sixth grader could see, maybe it'd be good to do. Maybe it'd be something good to do. Oh, gosh. But what do we want to see when it pushes through that line, folks? We want to see volume. Oh, nothing there. Oh, picks up a little bit. Nothing yet. But, you know, we got a line. Oh, nothing. Just going sideways. It's above the rising 50-day. It's above the rising 21 EMA. It's just resting. Oh, starts to pick up. Oh, look. Slight volume pickup, not much. It hasn't triggered yet, but gosh, I guess if it does, that'd be pretty good. And I'm gonna back up and tell you again, this was a stock with either great earnings and or great sales in a leading group. Advance at one bar. Boom. On this bar, folks, this stock did 9 million shares. And on this bar, the stock did almost 17 million shares, almost double what it did before. That's what you look for. So now this is taking CanSlim. What I say here, and this is no strike against CanSlim. CanSlim's great, okay? Investors Daily is awesome. Market Smith is awesome. They're the best. They changed my life, okay? So I'm grateful. Take it, find a couple of clean and simple chart patterns, and master them. And you, you will control your destiny when it comes to funds, when it comes to money. That's what we're after. I can show you several other examples. Should we do that, Owen? A couple more examples? Sure. And then there's some questions in here if you want to, if you want to uh, take some of those right now or later. We'll get to them. We'll get, yeah, well, let's, there we go. Here's advanced micro devices right here, folks. Look at it. It's just going sideways. It's nothing fancy. 
Here's one. You can say, well, Pat, there ain't nothing there. Guess what? I say the same thing, but watch this. Look at that. Nice long base. Just going sideways. Volume starts to pick up right there. Look at the volume pickup. And then it pushes through the next day. It's simple. If you focus on those, you will dramatically increase your potential for making money. DraftKings, I'll make this chart bigger. Right there. Training your eyes. You know, folks, I say this a lot. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. On the previous bar, the stock did 14.8 million shares. You can say, how the heck do you know that? See right here where it's got the V for volume? When I put my cursor on that bar, it says 14.76, 14.8. This bar right here, 50 million shares off to the races. And then starts to top out, sell some into strength. This entire move, we never looked at 10 minute charts. By the way, this stock was in the top 10 groups. See that right here? Top 10 groups. That's what we're after. Makes life easier for us. So now, point three, how to properly scale in and out of a position. Here's what I found. You look for the clean and simple base. And I stress again, companies, I'm, I'm not nuts and bolts. And I am nuts and bolts in everything here. I want to be extremely specific. We know the fundamental characteristics. We know the technical characteristics. We find both of them together and we wait for that pivot. By the way, I stress, if it goes through there, but there's no volume, no power, we just don't buy it. And for the people that just joined, a great tactic is take a look at volume on the hourly and look at volume on the 30 minute chart. Look for that volume surge and you'll do much better. Can't stress that enough. So we're getting to point three here, how to properly scale in and out of a position. We'll do this, Owen, and then we'll answer some questions. Should we? Deal. Okay. Owen gives me the, the thumbs up. And so that means we're all right. How do you scale in and out? After the stock has made a good move and it's going up, and I'm going to do something here. What do you notice about this? In fact, let's do the real world. It's going up, right? Advance in a bar. It's going up. How's the volume? Oh, it's still good. Dropped off a little bit. Oh, pulls back a little bit. Okay. But it's walking up the eight day. Oh, look at this. It's starting to pick up. What do you notice about the volume on this bar, folks? Pretty substantial drop off, right? Starts to fall down to the eight day. It actually takes out the previous bar's highs, runs and reverses down. On that bar, what will we do? Sell some off. How much? Sell 20% off. Not all of it. There's a quote that is tossed around on Wall Street. You'll never go broke taking a profit. And I know you can say, oh my gosh, what's he going to say now? I'm going to say this. That's a lie. He said, what? Are you crazy? If your losses are bigger than your profits, you'll go broke. So we have to try to let some of our shares ride as long as possible. Drops down, reverses, slight volume pickup. We're okay. Starts to pick up, slight volume pickup. Runs up, gaps up, runs up, okay. Look at this bar here, folks. It gaps up, it runs up and reverses down. Look at the volume pickup. See that? What do we do? Sell 20% more. Goes up. What do you notice about this bar? This is a great lesson in chart reading, by the way, folks. Down on heavier volume, up on less volume. Doesn't have as much power, does it? Up, oh, gaps up on a volume pickup. Okay, we're okay. We're still in it. We're still in it. Goes up, volume's all right. Drops down. Look at this bar. Could you sell some on that bar? You might. You could, but it still stayed above the eight day. We locked some profits in. This was a telling bar, though. Drops down, heavy volume on that bar, definitely you're selling 20% more. And that is, and we'll continue with this, you know, I don't want to beat this, to, but I want to just show you how to do this, all right? And then, there you go.
cells, cells, last cell right there, losing the 21. And if we hadn't sold into strength and just held on to it, I'm a buy and hold guy. Yeah. Okay. How's that feel? That's um, that doesn't work, you know? So that's how we run it. That's scaling in a position and scaling out. I encourage you to do it in 20% increments. In this whole move, I will tell you this, and this is the honest to goodness truth. Not once did I look at a five or a 10 minute chart. I don't need to, you don't need to. That is the real world of scaling in and scaling out. Let's continue on. What to do when a stock runs away from you and you're not in it. By the way, these are questions that were submitted. I love them. You know why? A, because they're yours and B, they're the real world. I mean, yet we've all had that. It's, it's a bummer. I'm keeping it clean, okay? It's very frustrating. What do you do? Watch it and see if there's a pausing motion in it on a daily chart. Don't look at lesser time frames. See if it catches its breath for a day or two. And maybe in that period of time, the eight period exponential cuts, catches up with it. If it does, and you can find a simple basing pattern, you could buy some there. But now I got to quantify it for you. Please don't make it a full position. The trend, this is the buy spot. There's no edge in buying a full position up here. The train has left the, the, uh, the station. You're opening yourself up to too much risk. You don't want to do that to yourself. So don't. It's very, very important. Let's take it a step further. Let's suppose that you bought up here. Okay. Why wouldn't you buy up there? Take a look at price and look at volume. It's extended. Pulls back, flips around, comes down here. And what does it do? Gaps down, falls, and closes up on a slight pickup in volume off the rising eight EMA. That could be a bar near the close that you could buy. If not, you could buy on this bar, which had a slight volume pickup. But remember this, and I, I'm maybe really trying to drive home a point, but I can't start. This is a business. You're running a business. Make sure that if you're buying something that's extended, that you have a rule to get out. What could be a great rule? And this is the real world, folks. If you're going to buy something that's extended, if at any time that stock takes out the lows of the bar that you're buying on, you better be careful and you might want to sell some off. And again, in this entire move, no five and 10 minute charts, you don't need to. These are rules and tactics without micromanaging that will help you make money, but more importantly, will keep you solvent, keep you in the game. Always remember, we must limit losses because if we lose all our money, we can't do it anymore. So that helps. That's scaling in and out, okay? Also, what to do when a stock runs away and you're not in it? We covered that. Let's get to the next point here. Is that good with you, Owen? If we go to the next one? That's good. Okay, brother. <laughs> How to handle a gap of when you're long the underline? Great question. You know what you do? You thank God and say, wow, this is great. <laughs> I had to say it. I'm sorry. No. You're in it. Let it work. Watch and see what happens with it. Please don't get in the habit of every time something gaps up, I got to sell. No, don't do that. Oftentimes that gap up that has good volume, all right, if it has good volume on that gap up, watch it that day and see how it acts. Now, if it runs up and then starts to reverse back down again, I think we could find one. Oh, here we go, right there. How to handle a gap up right here. Why wouldn't you buy this bar right here? I'll make it bigger for you. Let's do that. Why would you not buy this bar right here? Where was the safe entry on this chart? Right there. Look at the volume surge on that bar. As I stated, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted there. Okay. They were buying there. If, if you owned the stock already, you took a, your position here and it maybe added to it during the day on this gap up, could you buy a little more 
Yes. How much more? Rules of proper pyramiding. If you started on this on this bar here, and we'll say that you bought a thousand, a, nah, that's too much, a hundred shares. If you're buying up here or you're adding here, rules of proper pyramiding, the most you're gonna buy is either 50 or 30 shares. Please never double up. If you buy a hundred shares on this breakout and you're adding to it, do not buy 100 shares more. Rules of proper pyramiding. This is from Cansom level <clears throat> three and four. I will tell you, if your goal is to get up to $10,000 in a stock, you start as it breaks out, you start, and that's on long base breakouts, by the way. You start with 5,000, stock goes up a couple of percent, you buy $3,000 more. Stock goes up a couple of percent, you buy $2,000 more. Your goal is to get $10,000 in the stock, five, three, two. Here's the beauty of that. If it doesn't go up, you don't buy more stock. You've protected yourself. Isn't that great? It's the best of all worlds. I absolutely love it. Risk control, risk control, very, very important. I'm gonna pause here and just share this with you. As far as risk control is concerned, this is a great quote from Ed Sakota. If you can't handle a small loss, I think it goes like this. If you can't handle a small loss, pretty soon you're gonna take the mother of all losses, all right? And for those who don't know who Ed Sakota is, S-E-Y-K-O-T-A, Google him and look at the returns he got in his accounts. All right, just, just for what it's worth. So we handle the gap up. Last question I have here on this sheet, and it's a great one. Where's the market going from now until year end? I don't know. You said, what, what? I don't mean to sound like a smarty pants when I say that, but I'm just speaking the truth. When you accept the fact this is my own thought and quote. When you accept the fact you don't know the future, you'll see the future far more clearly. We don't know the future. All we can do is accept the fact we don't know it and we act accordingly and we let price and volume guide us. Now, that being said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and we'll just take a look at QQQ. How's that sound? Here's QQQ. You all see it? This is a daily chart. Oh, let's address this. And I hope this helps you. This is the 50 period moving average. This is the 21 exponential moving average. And this is the eight period exponential moving average. 50, simple, 21 exponential, eight exponential. You can say, well, this is just chopping around right now. I'm in agreement. What's it going to do? Well, here's what we can do. Let's go to the weeklies. Let's do weekly. Here's last year. Here's right now. Okay. Here's last year. That's a nice move. Let's go back another year. In 2018, it was doing this in the end of the year. Let's go back to 2017. Nice, strong end of year move. Let's go back to 2017. Pretty much sideways to the end of the year. We'll go back to 2016. That's a bad bar, excuse me. 2016, kind of lifted and then went sideways in December. See this? Just going sideways. These are weekly charts, by the way. December, October, November had a good run. And then it kind of went sideways. I'll go back one more year. Here's October, November, December of 2013. Nice move. Nice move. And then it paused. So where's the market going from now until the end of the year? Here it is right now. This is a weekly chart that you're looking at. It's oscillating back and forth, as you can see. I'm looking at the NASDAQ 100. I like that. That, to me, is a good proxy. You know why I like that one? Those are the big max list stocks, the growth stocks, the movers and the shakers. If a market's going to move, these will move. It's just going sideways right now, chopping around a little bit. I'll put this in the center of the screen so you can see it. It's just chopping around. Maybe it'll go sideways here a little bit, and it will lift into the end of the year. And the best part about all this, 
This is why I love taking the approach that we do. We don't need to forecast. We let price and volume guide us and we don't argue with it. If you can do that, you'll be light years ahead of everybody and you'll be in charge of your future in the markets. You don't have to depend on other people and forecasting. Let me be brutally blunt. As I said, I was there for the crash of 87 and everything else since. I've been doing this over half my lifetime. I don't know where we're going to be at the end of the year. I don't. Nobody does. But I do know this. By following price and volume, it can guide me. Price and volume and the action of the leading stocks. So it just makes it easier. I won't argue with it. I'll just get in line with whatever it's doing. And if it gets really crummy, I'll just sit tight and wait. I'll just wait because eventually it'll, like, it'll take off again. Okay. Mary's got a couple of questions in here. One I'm not real clear on. So I did unmute her. I don't know if she'll jump in or not. Mary, are you there? Maybe not. Okay. And, and she may not have a microphone either, but um, I okay. just sent a message to unmute. So thank you. Thank you. Owen. Okay. All right. So she wants to know she's uh, something about a problem, not knowing when to hold a stock even if I am swinging. So I guess she's in a swing trade and she's not sure when that swing trade ends. All right, let's do it. I like swing trading, by the way. I think swing trading is great. Here we go. Maybe we can find something. Let's just go through here and see if we can find a couple of examples. What about, um, um, what about even today, like Square? Let's do it. There we go. I moved the chart a little bit off to the center here. Here we go, folks. This is a good example. There's a couple of different setups. In fact, this is perfect. Excellent. Good question. You, got, you can have base breakouts, all right? Like right in here. We've owned this a couple of times. And this is a pullback setup. This is the real world. This is today, all right? The stock runs up on heavy volume right there. And then it pulls back. How's the volume on these bars versus this bar? Less. What does that tell us? That the selling pressure is drying up. Now, check this bar out here. You can say, well, oh, look, it lifted there, it lifted there. How was the volume on this bar versus this bar and this bar? It was less. There's not a lot of power there. It gaps up and it reverses down. And then it falls a little bit more. Now, look at this bar. It gaps down, it drops. I'm gonna make the chart a little bit bigger. Would that help you think on? How's that? It gaps down, it drops and reverses and closes near the highs on a pickup in volume. And notice this, it found support on the blue line. That's the 21 exponential moving average, found support, closed near the highs. This was on the key list. This was a pullback setup. What was the pivot or the buy? This is a swing trade setup, taking out the highs of this bar. And it did right here. And some VIPs bought it and it lifted. And as I say constantly, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted. Now, this is a swing trade setup. As it was rallying up here, I advised them to sell some off and they did two lots of 20%. By so doing, it guarantees a profit. This stock tomorrow could fall all the way back down to their purchase price, and they made money. They're in control. If it continues going up, they still own 60% of their original position. It's the best of all worlds. The best of worlds for profitability, but also the best of worlds for controlling risk. Got it all together right there. Also, I will tell you this in this whole move, because I was watching it too. No five minute charts. You don't need to use them. 10 minute, maybe, which leads to this. Look at the volume on that bar, folks. That's the first bar today. That's a 30 minute chart. Here's the hourly. Look at the volume surge versus the previous day. You can take it down to 10. Look at that first bar today, folks. Boom. Meanders around. And now look at this bar. It goes up on heavy volume, the first bar this morning. 
quiet bar, inside bar, a reversal bar, but still inside the big move of this bar. And then look at this bar. What did it do on this bar? You can see Patrick had picked up. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks, folks. They voted. You buy more. There you go, if you wanted to. But if not, just let it work. So there's an example. The real world today. Today. This is a pullback setup. Do you do as much? Do you buy as many shares on this as a base breakout? No. This is riskier. How do we control risk? Buy less shares. And it works. First one is trend lines. Is that the first one from David? Uh, well, I, I answered that. He wanted to know, how do you draw your trend line? How do you draw the right side of the trend line? Where do you pick it? Why don't you, why don't you go through, draw a couple of them. Okay, sounds um, good. I, can I told I, him that the uh, downward sloping trend line is kind of a favor to yours. Can I, can I slide this over just a little bit? Yeah. Mm -hmm, Thank sure. you. Very good. So here, let's, um, well, we'll just, let's just do this stock, okay? This is how I draw a downward sloping trend line. Just like that. Say, so, oh, if it takes out the top of that line, that'd be easy. I love clean and simple trend lines. I will tell you that. I have found through the years, it's a great way to make, this is just pointing something out. That's not a trend line, but I know we can find some. Oh, here's one. Look at that. Just going sideways. All right. Now that's not a downward sloping trend line. Let me see if I can find one here. Bear with me. That was a base breakout. Here we go. This is good. This is a real world, folks. Oh, by the way, I put this on here for VIPs and for myself so I don't get in trouble. This sucker's got earnings tomorrow, okay? But let's suppose that it didn't and it triggers. I'll do this. Just like that. In fact, what is it? You tell. You all tell me. What do we got going on here? We got a pennant forming. Maybe tomorrow it'll take out the top of that pennant. But please know this, everybody that's listening, NVIDIA has earnings tomorrow, okay? Please know the earnings dates. I can't stress that enough, all right? That's just crucial. Here's a shorter downward sloping trend line right there. And what was it doing, folks? Right here. It's just pulling back. I mean, I, this is not precise, but you get the point. Here, I'll do this for you. I'll make it more precise. Let's connect the tops. What's it doing right here? It's pulling back to the rising ADMA. Want to see something cool? Watch this. There it is. It's pulling back. Volume was less on this day than the previous day. Advance at one bar. Look at the volume pickup. Do you think we're the only people in the world that, that know about the 8 EMA? Heck no, it's sweet. And it lifted off. And there you go. That's nice. Let me find another one for us. Oh, here's, here's one. Just a simple downwards. You know, you connect, get close to the highs. Also, this, something very important for all of you. Please don't think that, oh, it's got to be exactly the, the, to the penny, the top of that bar, and to the penny of the top of that bar. No, just get close to it. Get close to it, and you'll do just fine. I promise. It works. Let's see if we can find another chart, shall we? Uh, on this one, I was just trying to point something out. That's not a downward slope and trend line here, okay? I'll shrink this down a little bit. Right there. Just kind of vanilla. Amazon's an interesting stock because there's a little spot right here, but you got to give it a heck of a lot of room, a lot of room. Oh, should I do? Let's see. We did Mary. Uh, Jaroslav. Oh, there you go. Czech Republic. Hey, Czech, Czech Republic. That's awesome. Welcome to the, uh, welcome to the webinar, sir. Glad you're here. Oh, don't have a mark. Okay. That's okay. What advice? I'm just going to go to scroll down these. Is that cool, Owen? We're doing TP? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. What advice would you give to yourself if you were starting again in regards to mindset and psychology? That is a great question. I'm going to read it again. What advice would you give to yourself 
if you were starting again in regards to mindset and psychology. And I have a degree in psychology also and really studied what's going on in our head. I said this before, the biggest part of this game is not what's before our eyes, it's what's between our ears. Positive mindset is crucial and something that will help all of you and there's nothing in it for me, please. Jack Schwager has a book called Market Wizards. That book really helped me. I mean, it really helped me. And here's why. It's interviews with top traders, but the last chapter is an interview with Dr. Van Tharp, T-H-A-R-P. He is a psychologist or psychiatrist that specializes in helping investors and traders overcome the things that are screwing them up. Marco Wizards, Jack Schwager. It is a great book. I have read that chapter. Honest to God, I bet you I've read that chapter 20 times over the years. When my head gets something like, I'm too impatient in the markets. What can I do to control that? So that we don't sabotage ourselves. That will help you. All right, keep on going here, brother. Starting again, good. I've okay. seen you throughout the day mention that some stocks are widespread. Oh, good. Great question from Jonathan. Oh, by the way, out of respect for all of you, please know this. Only first names here. I'm not going to say somebody's total name, okay? I just, I'm, I'm very private just to let you know. And out of respect for you, that's, that's the way I run it. Um, widespread. That is a good question. What I'm talking about a widespread is a spread between the bid and ask. And one of the stocks that came, comes to mind is right here. This one, TTD. Sometimes this stock trades with a really wide spread between the bid and the ask. Just be careful of that. And you can say, well, boy, it looks really good there. That's true. But that if you catch it at the wrong spot, that widespread, you could buy it and it just down ticks. Let's suppose you bought it for 780 bucks and the bid is 778. You bought it for 780 and the bid 778. And it down ticks just from 780 down to uh, 779. That bid also drops a buck. Guess what happens? you're down $3 in the blink of an eye. And you can say, well, percentage wise, that's not much. I'm in agreement, but hey, three bucks is three bucks. You gotta be careful with it. I'll share this with you. One of the things that I've noticed is many of the higher priced listed stocks on the New York exchange trade with a wider spread. Be careful of that because you can get stuck really bad just for what it's worth. All righty, let's go on here. Psychology, widespread, we did that one. Talk about your story, feeding the family of six. Very good. Great question, man. Yeah, ramen noodles. <laughs> yeah, Doug, it's a great question. Here's what we did. I worked really hard. And I know this sounds awful to say, but I'll be honest, through the years I've had people say, I couldn't work with you because you're so driven. And um, maybe you think, boy, that's awful. I was never a jerk to anybody um, and I'm keeping it clean. But yeah, there were times, you all are students of the market. There are times when the money just flows. Everything's great. And then there's times when it's choppy. What should be our goal? Hit it hard, be focused, be disciplined and really push it when things are good. I mean, when things were really good, I used to get huge margin calls. I mean, six-figure margin calls. They hated me in Chicago. I'd get phone calls, but they also loved me. So just push it hard, control risk when things are good. And then when things are bad, have the discipline to sit and wait. I say this a lot to the VIPs, just because the market's open for business doesn't mean you have to do business. So you hit it hard, you make your money, be a good steward of it, 
keep it, you know, hang on to some, you got to live by the way, keep it. And you know, the stupid phrase, but it's the truth, save it for a rainy day, because there will be periods that you'll need, you'll need to dip into it, which is very frustrating. But you know, what's even worse, thinking psychologically, I got to make money, I got to make money. And so you start doing things when the market is not in proper, proper frame for you. And then you know what happens, you start losing. So then it's a double whammy. You're losing money and you're taking money out of the account at the same time. That's not good. I'm keeping it clean. Okay. That's not good. So there's times to push it and a time to lay low and just wait. Then you can say, well, what do you do during that time? Years ago, you know what I used to do? I used to do a heck of a lot of mountain biking. <laughs> okay. Trail riding. I'd get away from, I'd go, I said, there's nothing happening. I got to get the heck out of here. Don't try to do something if it's not there. If, if you have trouble, if a sixth grader can't see the chart pattern, it ain't there. Move on, move on. During that period of time, you know what you can do? Study past winners. We're actually putting together a couple of books of past winners. And by the way, I'm not trying to market it. I don't want you to think that, but it's gonna be called 20 Great Stock Market Winners. And we have it through, we got it over the course of 20 plus years. What's gonna be on there? The chart, study your past winners. Do that, make good use of your time. And don't let this computer turn into a slot machine because it can suck you in. Study, take care of yourself, exercise, do some homework and you'll be all right, you'll be all right. But then when things are good, push it, push it and make your money without being stupid and reckless, just for what it's worth, okay? Okay, I got one for you here, Pat. This is a good one. I'm skipping okay. a couple. We'll come back to it if we have some time, but okay, cover ahead. this. Ernesto wants to know in your VIP program, when you teach and coach, do you, will you eventually learn enough to fly solo? Yes. From my heart, yes. I don't want people to say, I've got to stay with you. I'm really being honest with you folks. My goal is this. I pour my heart into it. I want to help you every way I can so that eventually, you know how I've succeeded? When you don't need me anymore. When you don't need anybody anymore that you can do it, then you're gone. You're on your own and you can run with it. Yeah. No, I, um, I know somebody can say, God, what a stupid thing to say. You know, I mean, you've got a subscription service. Yeah, but you know, morally, from a moral perspective, I don't think it's morally right to sit there and say, yeah, I just want them to stay and never leave. Please don't take offense to that if you're a VIP. I'm not trying to get rid of you, but I want you to become proficient enough that you can do it. Because if you don't, if you don't get there, then I failed. I didn't do what I was supposed to do. That, and I'm speaking from my heart. I will tell you, I'm speaking from my heart. So anyway, that's, that's the cold hard facts. Getting to the point where you can do it. And speaking of controlling losses, how about this one? April wants to know, how do you scale out of a losing position? Great question. I'll repeat it. How do you scale out of a losing position? If it's bad, I sell it. All of it. <clears throat> Again, I was feeding six people. Now, you know, everybody's gone now, except one's, one's still home right now, but all of them, I got grandkids out there. How about that? Isn't that crazy? Three of them running around. Woo! Don't say I'm old. You're going to make me mad. That won't work. But anyway, I'm grateful they're here in, the, in town. If you've got a loss, take it. Sell it. Sell it. You're like, yeah, but what if it comes back? Okay, let's control what's up here. Sell one half. And again, this isn't textbook. This is the real world. I've been there. I know what, folks, I'm going to tell you something. I know what it's like to be down 200 points on a $600 stock. It's bad. It eats your head up alive. I know because it's happened to me. All right. And you can say, well, what stock was it? It was Amazon many, many, many years ago. It was stupid. It was stupid. Anyway, protect yourself. Protect yourself financially. Protect yourself emotionally. Get livable. I read this someplace and I heard it from a guy I used to trade with. Uh, his first name's David. I'm not going to tell you his last name. Get livable. If you're losing sleep over your stocks, 
settle down to your sleeping point and never let a loss run away from you and banish this thought. And I'm not trying to preach here and sound like a jerk. Lose this thought. Oh, it has to come back. It probably will. But in the meantime, God only knows how far, far is. And it'll just, it causes something in you. And Van, and, uh, Van Tharp talks about it. You know what it's called? It's called the freeze. Do everything you can to avoid the freeze. Protect yourself. Protect yourself financially. Protect yourself emotionally. And one of the best attributes is of a successful investor and trader. You know what it is? You think this is corny? Short-term memory. Move on. Move on. And if you get your butt kicked in something and you sell it, take it off your page. And no vengeance trading. Never. And I know you can say, boy, Pat, you're getting animated here. Please don't try to say, I'm going to make it back in that stock. I'm going to make it back. Folks, it's not a living entity. It doesn't know you exist. It doesn't even know us. It's just a stock that goes up and down in price. Just move on. That's all. This is good. Bo okay. wants to know about ETFs. You know, we do a lot with QLD and SSL. And typically we're saying, along with Bill O'Neill, that we hold around five to eight stocks in our portfolio. Yeah. He wants to know, do you treat the ETFs as the same as a stock as far as position size, or do you go larger when you're, when you're trading QLD and SSO? Great question. I can go larger in those two. Why? A, they're very fluid. B, you know, QLD, instead of owning one stock, you own a hundred of them. And you know what you own a ton of them? The max list stocks. I love the max list stocks. So yeah, go bigger there. But don't get reckless with them. And always, always, let me, let me see if I can pull it up here. Here we go. Here's QLD. QLD. There you go. I mean, this, this has been really good. To work. Folks, I want you to think about this. This ETF owns the NASDAQ 100. It owns the GoGo stocks. It owns Apple, Amazon, Google, Baidu, Alibaba, Tesla, Twitter. Man, it owns those stocks. The, the stocks that are on the cutting edge of technology, all right? And you try to tr catch a trend with them, it is, you know what I call it? I call it sweet potato pie. But I do stress, always try to find a clean and simple entry. And, and tied in with QLD, I want to show you all something that, that's related to the market right here. This is why you limit losses. You buy here and it loses, you know, and it loses and Oh, it'll come back. And so you hang on with it. Let's suppose you bought it. I got to look at the number up here. You bought it in the seventies. Okay. And you watch that animal drop all the way down and you lost almost half your money. That screws up your head. Be careful with that. But I'm going to, I'm going to flip to a negative. We are a positive. We got out because we own this and we got out. I ain't going to ride this animal down. Starts losing the 50. Look at the volume on that bar. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Look at this thing when they gap down and losing the 50. Hey, don't argue with it because I don't know where the bottom is. And you can say, well, that's not too bad. Well, from 66 all the way down to 35. Hey, that done flush. That done flush. But here's something I want to show you. This will help you in the future. Look what it does. It falls and then it rallies up. And what does it do? It falls. But notice here. What do you have right here? You have a higher low. When it started to lift right there, you know what we were doing? Big picture, higher low. We were buying. And that was sweet. Now, I want you to take note of something here. You see that date? That's April 3rd. You got a higher low here. Watch this. You're going to get more than you bargained for now. SSO. Remember I said the date, April 3rd? See this right here? You have a higher low here too. In fact, I'm going to do something for you. Can I do something, Owen? Mm -hmm. Sure I can, because I'm a, like a kid in a candy store. Here we go. He, he says this. that as if I have any input at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. Okay, here we go. I want you to look. First part of April, what do you have here on SSO? Tell me, folks. You got a higher low. What do you have here? Got a higher low, right? I want you to look at these two charts and I want you to tell me, this is the 200 day moving average line. Which stock, which ETF was closer to the 200 day moving average line 
right here at that higher low? This one or this one? Which one's 200 day was going flat and which one's 200 day was falling? This one or this one? This was stronger and that's why we bought QLD. There you go. That is the real world deal right there. And that was a great run. You want to see something great? Check this out. I get excited about this if you didn't know. Here we go. There it is. You miss all this, folks. This is awful. This is wicked. But then, because you're out, you have a clear head, you can catch the higher low. And I mark, and he just walks up the moving. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. You just walk that animal on up. There you go. Now, this is unique. I didn't know how high I was going to go, but you know what? You ride it for all it's worth. So anyway, there you go. I love QLD and I love SSO. I love both of them, but I'm always looking for which one's the strongest. And that's what I'll focus on. This is probably a good time to throw this in there. Um, Scott asks about trading styles. You know, how's our, how's our trading style changed from back then when we actually had a trend to today where it's whippy and choppy? That is a great question. I like that. Here we go. Here's the real world right here. This is today. This is QLD chopping back and forth and back. And there's not a lot of rhythm here, is there? I mean, seriously, it goes up, then it drops like a dang rock, and then it goes up and it drops like a dang rock, and then it goes up and it puts in a big reversal bar, and then it falls and puts in a reversal back and forth. Going up here, but there's not a lot of volume here. This back and forth action is really tough. So what do I do with it? I'll tell you what I do. I pull back and I'll wait for things to settle down. When will it settle down? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm doing two things. I'm controlling capital, both financial capital and mental capital so that I don't have a problem. We wait, eventually clear skies come again and we don't have a lot of baggage. We're not scarred and we're able to go again and it works out great. So anyway, I hope that helps. Here's, here's one. Um, okay. How do you recognize if the market isn't up in, in an uptrend or under pressure. Uh, use IBD for this, but would like to understand what many great traders say. I look how the leaders act and not the indexes. Yeah, the indices. So you do, you look at the indices, but he wants to know how you determine whether the market's in an uptrend or if it's under pressure. And the second part is, how do you spot those leaders? Great question. I, I, I love this. How do I spot the leaders? You're going to love this. We'll go back right to the very beginning. I know the fundamental characteristics of the stocks that are going to be super stocks. I know they're going to have either great earnings and or great sales and they're in the top 40 industry groups and they're within 20 to 30% of 52 week highs. Man, I got that down. You've got that down. All right. Now all I got to do, you know, the characteristics is wait for them. But I'm going to give you a couple of filters. Focus on stocks that are within after a big decline maybe 30% off 52 week highs. Focus are the ones, like I just did that example on QLD and SSO, focus on the ones that are refusing to fall. Let's suppose you've got eight stocks that you're interested in and six of them are still falling in price, but two of them aren't and they're starting to go back up. Those are your leaders. Those are your leaders. I promise, focus on those. And the beautiful thing is, have you noticed this whole time I'm talking, I'm not looking at um, hourly charts and five, just look at the daily and the weekly charts. Look at the bigger picture and say, hey, you know what, man, that thing looks awful. That one looks awful. Oh, look at that. That's really bad. Well, look at that. That sucker ain't falling. I'll be darned. That's probably a leader. And then what do you have to do? Just wait for the low risk entry spot. Look for like right here, QLD. Look for a higher low a higher low. This low is higher than this low. And look, good volume on that pickup. That will help you dramatically. And I'll say it again too. I'll tell you this, folks. There's nothing wrong with focusing on QLD and SSO. I think they're great. And the other thing I love is I love the max list stocks. I love them. They are big money flows there. Focus on those. We'll do something here real quick. 
Sorry about that. I got to drag this over, folks. Is that in the screen, Owen? It is. There you go, folks. Right here, there's the max list. There, there. I don't have any secrets. These are, this is what I always tell people. These stocks, nobody does what Apple does as good as Apple does it. Nobody does what Amazon does as good as Amazon does it. Blank, 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 blank. Now, is there rotation among those? Oh, yes. Yeah, some of these stocks right now are in the doghouse, okay? But eventually they'll come back. Twitter, who, and I'm not endorsing Twitter, okay? I'm not endorsing any of these. I'm just saying, think about Google, all right? I'm going to do an internet search. Yeah, I'm going to use Bing. What? No, you go to the franchise. You go to the best of the best. There they are. Tesla. Tesla was huge for us. Pre-split, we made like 2,000 points on Tesla. Just And I can document that. It, they're the best. They're the cream of the crop. Now, there's other companies that are coming in, like Neo and things. Focus on That's the max list. If you want a great shopping list, right here, folks, in these ETFs, you can just do these, and you will do extremely well. There you go. I got so many windows open. I don't know what I'm looking at. All righty. So <laughs> do, do you always? <laughs> that was great. I'm the same way. Got my screen, your screen. How many monitors? Um, do you, you've got three monitors too, don't you, Owen? Yeah. Yeah, I got three of them going here. I know my one buddy who's probably in here, he's got six of them. I'm not going to say his name. He's great though. Okay, go ahead. This this may go as this may go longer than so you'll have to figure out which how you're gonna handle this base. Yeah, if it has to do with hair loss, no way. No way, you're not going down there. That's um, it. Do you always buy on descending trend line breakouts or also on upside reversal days and pullbacks? Oh, great question. Yeah, let's go in here and let's let's noodle this real quick. Probably just use the uh, let's just go on the max list. I'll drag that over. And here's what I'm going to do. I love any pattern. And I don't, I'm not trying to sound cute here. I love any pattern that is really clean and simple and easy for everybody to see. It does not need to be the cup and a handle. Any pattern that is easily recognizable that, and this is important, historically has led to profits. And one of the best things you can do tied in with that, folks, study past winners. Study your past winners. And you can say, I don't have any past winners. Then you know what you can do? I'll make it easy for you. Just look at the max list stocks. Look at them on daily charts and look at them on weekly charts and focus on clean and simple entries. Now, this, this has gotten choppy in here, right? But notice this, folks. What do you have here? Make that a little bit bigger. Right there. It's connected the tops. You have a fairly clean downward sloping trend line right there. It's nothing fancy. You can say, well, gosh, I guess if it pushes above that line, it would be good. Now, this is what we do at Mission Winners. I want you to look really hard at this. It went up on good volume but it fell on heavy volume on that bar, right? Then it meandered around, had very heavy selling on this bar, and then it lifted back up on less volume. And then it reversed down on a pickup in volume right here. And it just meandered sideways on decreasing volume. So the question I have is when you look at this, is there, <laughs> this sounds simple, but it's the fact. Are there more green bars than red bars or more red bars than green? Well, it's easy. There's more red than green. They're selling in this right now. So what does that tell us? It tells us if it pushes through that white line, that clean and simple white line, you know what it needs? It's going to need real volume. Now, this is the daily chart. This is a great tactic also. By the way, this isn't hocus pocus, you know, touchy feel. This is the real world. Look at the daily Look at the weekly. Here's the weekly. And I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. 
and I'll get rid of this trend line so that it's easier. But you can see just connecting those tops where I got it from, okay? So I'll get rid of this, we'll get rid of that, and this. So now look at this. You're gonna say, well, Patrick, from what you've told me, it's always important to look at the green bars and the red bars. Well, folks, here's the real world. Is that a good bar or a bad bar? That's a bad bar. It gapped up versus the previous week's close and it ran up and it closed below the where it opened on that week on heavy volume. It was met with selling. So then you can say, well, then Pat, this bar here is a green bar on heavy volume. It's a good bar. Look closely. I want to really do this for you. This will really help you, okay? Here's where it gapped up. Here's where it closed the day before, the week before, excuse me. It gapped up and it ran up and it closed below where it opened on the weekly bar on heavy volume. It was met with sellers. That's great chart reading. I'm gonna go through it again for you, okay? I love teaching this. This is really important, okay? This will help you, I promise. It's gonna make you better than most people. Well, it's, oh, it's a green bar on heavy volume. It's a great bar. Well, no, it's not. Look what the thing did. You got your butt kicked. Here's where it closes. And the next bar on a weekly, it gaps up. See the open right there? I'll make it even bigger for you. This is really important. It gaps up, see the close here? It opened there, it gapped above it. It gaps up and it runs up. But look at where it closes. It closed below where it opened on the weekly bar on heavy volume. It was met with selling, not buying. If you can look at that and combine those together, you will be light years ahead of other people. Light years. Can't stress that enough. Okay, Owen, should we run through that deeper? You want to run through that question again? We'll go further with it. Oh, I think we better, we've been going an hour and a half and I think we said we'd go an hour to an hour and 15. So I think we should probably. Hmm. Buddy, I'm just getting started, man. I, you know I, me. I know. Well, that's, that's the only thing I'm really good for here is to cut you off before you, you know, just go all night. Wait, I thought this was a six hour webinar. That's what <laughs> we booked it for. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Well, folks, yeah, we should. Okay. That sounds great. First off, I, and I mean this sincerely, I thank you for your time. I, I think you can tell, and again, there's a lot of people in here that I know. I see names that I recognize. Um, I recognize these, but I won't say them out of respect for you. But I just hope this helps you. I've gone through the frustration periods before where it's like, what the heck? I can't get this. I can't get this. And um, one of the best things I can tell you to do is this. Study past winners. And we do it every day with our members. We're constantly showing ones to train our eyes and train our eyes on, my, on what to look for. Always control risk. Please, if you re only remember one thing, remember this. Please control risk. Limit losses. Remember this. A clean and simple entry will give you a clean and simple exit for a much smaller loss. Last thing I'll say Ride trends for as long as possible. As long as it's going, just stay with some. And that's low stress money. Low stress money. Thank you all very much for your time. Oh, I apologize. and thank you all so much. So appreciate it. And Come again, back, have, have a good, safe rest of your week. And wherever you are, be safe, please. I thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming. Good night. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Karen.